Alright, hi guys, this is Jar Art Spy and welcome to another tutorial. Now in this one we're going to be doing a pretty cool effect. It's similar to the stroke scope tutorial, except it instead of being a stroke, it's particles. Now it is a pretty nice tutorial. I haven't actually used this effect yet. Um, I'm hoping to use it in a new edit, so I'm giving you guys the sneak preview of um, kind of how it's going to look, I guess. So I'm just going to play this through and let you watch the effect we're going to be creating, and then we're going to go ahead and get like stuck in there and carry on doing it. So this is what we're going to be making. So as you can see it's a pretty cool effect, you've got the particles coming in here and then boom carries on and gets the clip. Now um, the thing that I didn't do when I made this example is put a clip before so obviously you'd have a clip running and, um, running, and then this would be the layer on, on top. So it like this the particles come in over a clip which makes it look really nice. If you had a colour correction in it looks really nice so for the way I've done it. So yeah let's just get right in here, I'm going to make a new composition. I'm going to make it roughly 5 seconds long. We're going to call this um, particle scope transition. Um, okay, so I've got my clip. Let's just drag this in here. Now I'm going to scroll through to where he's, he first scopes in. Well, this is actually my clip, so where I first scope in. If you're doing the weekly co editing contest for this week, then you'll know that this is one of the clips I put in the um, clip thingy. Okay, right, here we go. So this is where he first scopes in, so I'm going to command D or press control D to duplicate the layer and then on this one the bottom one I'm going to right click go to time oh it's this side freeze frame so now if I just hide the top layer quickly if we scroll through you'll see it's just this entire clip now so I'm just going to drag this back so it matches that it doesn't really matter where you position it because it's the same clip so at roughly one second I want this to happen I'm going to hit T and I'm going to grab the op keyframe the opacity here I'm going to go forward 10 frames, I'm going to go forward 20 frames actually now I'm going to hit the middle button here, the middle little diamond shape I'm going to go back to the previous keyframe and drag the opacity down to 0 so now it fades in this beginning is very similar to the stroke scope tutorial, if you've seen that you know what I'm doing um, you want to duplicate this layer by pressing command D you want to then press T to bring the opacity up and you want to drag these keyframes to match this, like so so now the first frame is matched with the last keyframe of the last one. So now this one fades in and it looks like not nothing happens because there isn't actually anything done yet. So on this frame, on the last where it fades in on like the like the duplicator clip, you want to find that same this same spot on the layer above. So I'm just going to drag this over again and just find that spot, which is this frame here. Uh, actually, I think that was a bit off. There we go. Now you want to hit Control Shift and D or Command Shift D if you're on a Mac and then delete the previous layer that will split the layer. So now what we have is if I just um, mute them, we've got the clip fade in and then it carries on playing. Now the thing we're missing here is that this bit it's still the HUD. We want just to be the scope here. So now to do this, I'm just gonna go to kind of this frame. I'm gonna hide the layer above it so I don't mask that one by mistake. And we're going to then click this circle mask tool up here. If you've got the rectangle, hold down, hold the button down and click the ellipse tool. Now you'll then hold shift and drag. So you can see we're starting to get the scope here. Now I don't want it to be super big, I want it to be just around the scope. So I'm just going to kind of guess roughly where it should go. Uh, then you can use the mouse to drag it around, reposition it. Now I'm going to um, make that layer in, like visible again. I'm going to drag it beneath so I can then... Um, go back a couple frames and then I can adjust where the mask is. What you can do is you can go to the mask and where it says ex expansion you can actually hide the mask by clicking this little button here and then you can actually drag the expansion down so you can just get, I don't want the edges of the, of the, the scope here, I just want the actual scope. So something like that will do, it's quite nice. I'm going to add a couple, like a bit of feather, so maybe two feather. Actually no, I want to do one feather because it was quite noticeable if you're at two. Okay, so now what we have, as you can see, the scope fades in, the rest of the clip fades in, and then we carry on playing. So that's the main stuff done now. You can actually drag that layer beneath. Um, no, actually, you can leave it on top. Now, just to avoid confusion, I'm going to name these layers. I'm going to call this back FF, so we know that's the back f back plate freeze frame. I'm going to call it back plate freeze frame, actually. And then we can call this the circle plate, circle plate freeze frame. So now I'm just going to bring the keyframe up for that again, so I know um, the opacity, sorry, 
so I know where the stuff starts. And it comes in, and then he goes up, and boom, he shoots. Okay, so now we can actually get into the interesting stuff. The first thing you want to do is go to Layer, New Light. Now that's a bit weird, but just bear with me. It will probably be set on parallel or spot to start with. You want to change the light type to point. And you can ignore all this, you don't need any of it. You just want to call the name emitter. Now it's a it's a must do, you have you have to call the light an emitter. Um hit OK. Um you you might get a pop-up when you first go to light saying it's only pliable on 3D layers or something like that. Just click OK on that. I, I get it when I apply it as well. Okay, so we want the light to start roughly 10 seconds before the fade-in. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click the open square bracket button. Now that will start the layer where the mount, where the playhead was. I'm going to then go to where I want it to end, which is roughly where the um, back plate starts the fade-in, and hit Alt, close square bracket, so that will then end the clip there. So now we've got this, we've got just a weird looking light in the middle of the clip. Now, the thing is, with... Um, we're going to be using trap code particular, sorry I should have mentioned that before. Um, I'm sure you can use uh, like CC Particle World or something like that, but um, I'm using trap code particular in this example. Um, I might do one for uh, like CC Particle World in the future if people don't have particular. Um, with particular, you can't make it you, without like having to animate the entire thing by hand. You can actually get it to follow the exact same mask you use for the circle plate. So. I bring the mask back on here. You can use this exact mask as a track point. But the thing is, you can't just tell it to follow the mask. You have to have something for it to follow. Now, under Trap Code Particular, if we go to Layer New Solid quickly, I'm going to call this oh, Particles. Hit OK. Now you can make it the same size as the light. So Alt, Open Square Bracket, Alt, Close Square Bracket. Now, what you can do is, under Effect in Particular, if we go to Trap Code Particular and apply that, in the emitter, you can see that there's an emitter type, and there's one that says lights. Now you can basically get Chalco Particular to emit the particles from a light that you've added. Now it will only um, admit them from the actual light that's called emitter. You have to have them called emitter 1, 2, 3, or just emitter. You can kind of keep going up to have more emitters. Um, so that's the key thing you want to do. I'm just going to hide this layer just while we do this. So to get the emitter to follow the light, to follow your path, you go to the mask, so you hit M on the circle plate, click mask path and press command or control C. If you're on a PC, press control obviously. Now on the emitter, hit P on the emitter layer, the light, sorry, hit P to bring up the position, click the position, then press command V or control V to paste. Now, as you can see, we've got this weird looking stuff going on here. Um, basically what's happened is, you've now got the light, seems to be following the, um, you've got these keyframes. Now what you can do is, because we obviously want it to start, or we wanted the light to start, you can drag it back, because they're all selected. And at the moment it cuts off here because it's only selected that certain area. So what you can do is, you don't need to move any of these ones in the middle, you can go to the last frame here, and you can just click and drag this last one here. So you can deselect all of them, and just click and drag this last one, and it will put the ones in the middle back to, it will like keep them in sync. So now, you can see, the light now follows the shape of the scope and then it comes in. Um, it's pretty cool like that and then obviously if you unhide the particles layer you can see that the particles follow the light around. So it's pretty cool however there's a lot of stuff needs to be done to the particles. So let's go ahead and jump in there. We want to zoom in a bit so we can see the keyframes a bit easier. Now on the first frame, so the first frame the particles are visible, you want to hit the stopwatch next to the particles per second under emitter and bring it down to zero. And then go forward one two frames and you want to bring the particles up to go forward two frames you can hold command or control and press right arrow to go forwards left arrow to go back or you can just drag along a couple frames and you want to change the particles per second to something like 750 that's what I used now that's quite a lot of particles so obviously the worse your computer is the less particles you should use because it takes time to render so now as you can see we've got the particles coming around like this now it's starting to look good already now a couple more things we need to do we want to change the ending now obviously it just cuts off here so, and actually we were lucky, what happens sometimes is if, if you leave the particles layer running a bit longer, you can see that because the light stops, the particles just start emitting up there. But because we decided to cut it off there, oh, oops, go away, um, cut it off there, it doesn't actually do that. But we want it to fade out nicely once it reaches the top. So we're going to drag the particles layer forward maybe a couple frames, um, maybe 14 or so, not 14, sorry, 4. 
So on the last one here, you want to again hit U to become the keyframes. Next to the particles per second, hit the little um, add keyframe button. Go forward literally two frames and bring it down to zero. Now what you want to do is find the keyframe right here to the top, which is the one which you started on, and you want to make sure the last one finishes there so it stops emitting particles the second it gets to the top. So now we've already got it started looking right. Now you want to hold shift and press T to bring up the opacity. Hit this keyframe for that, and then go forward to the end of the thingy. I'm going to be spammed with emails here. <laughs> um, go to where you want the thing to end and bring it down to zero opacity. So now it fades out, which is pretty cool. However, we don't want all these particles out here, and they're going out quite quite wide and far. So to change that, you want to go to the particle uh, kind of drop down, where it says life per second. I'm going to put this at 0.35. So this lasts now literally three, three and a half seconds. So now as it goes through, you can see it lasts quite a bit sh um, shorter. Obviously, they start to dive here, but they're still lasting quite a while. Um, so I'm going to go maybe two, five, make it half a bit, maybe. So now the part come through and it's not as long. That's what she said. Oh, dear, I should stop making that sort of she said jokes in tutorials because that's just bad for me. Um, OK, so we've done that now. So it's starting to look pretty cool. It's like a seesaw, seesaw, seesaw. Um, so next thing we need to do is obviously um, make sure they stop flying out. So to do that, in the emitter section, where it says velocity, I'm going to change the velocity down to something like, um, I'm going to get 85. It will then let that come not come as far out. The velocity distribution, I'm going to go, actually not the velocity random, I'm going to change that down to 10. And then I'm going to change the velocity from motion down to maybe 10 as well. So now it follows the path a lot more. The velocity motion is the one that you want to keep an eye on. If it follows, if you put it the velocity motion down to zero, it follows the exact path, but it doesn't look as natural. So I want them to, I want them to flow a little bit. So I'm going to leave it at 10. So they do actually move um, without kind of, kind of they, they move freely almost. Um, now where it says particles per sec modifier, change that down to none. Now it won't change it that much but just in case you play with some of the light settings by accident that will kind of avoid those problems. Now where it says emitter size you want to bring that down to one and one and all of them. So now it's a lot more of a solid trail, it's not as wide. Um, so that looks pretty cool already. Now I'm, I'm thinking that the particles aren't dying as quickly as I want them to so again it's just life, lifetime, I'm going to bring it down to 0 0.15 so it lasts even shorter now. There we go, I think that's looking cool. Now there are a couple more things you can do, you can change the colour of these. So under particle this is, I'm going to hide emitter for now, you can see that it says set colour here. Now you can change that to at birth, which is where you can just change the colour to whatever you want, now they're red. Or you can change it to over life, which is what we want, random from gradient and from light emitter. Now these two are quite, um, I haven't actually looked at these two at all, I've never used them. But the one we want to use is over life. So now as you can see you've got rainbow, rainbows. Um, as you see, as the particles progress in their life, they change colour, which is pretty cool. But we don't want it to be rainbow, so where it says colour over life here, that should now be available to you. So you can come here and you can see you've got this little um, gradient type thing. Now you can click some of the examples here, so we're going to have um, white to kind of purpley black here. You can then like to green. Um, this is a weird one. Now the one I generally use is blue, so what you can do is you can then go to, I like to go from a deep blue to a light blue so it gets lighter and lighter so maybe a deep dark blue at the start then I'll kind of go to the middle roughly drag that to the middle then go to a medium blue something like that and then the last blue we can then go to a super nice bright blue now that's even a bit dark so I think I'm going to brighten up a bit a little bit just kind of keep playing with it and just till you get something you like really um, something like that maybe, there we go, it looks a lot cooler. So we're pretty much almost done here guys, you've got the, so now basically what you have is, you, have the, you can obviously have your normal clip here, then the transition starts, the particles come in, it's overlaid on the scope, and the scope comes in, and then he carries on. Um, there's obviously a lot of stuff you can play in here, you can add some shading in, if I add shading in here you can see it changes it quite a bit, but you can obviously play with all the settings in particular. I don't really want to go into much of these because um, some of it can get quite confusing. 
You can change the transphobe mode in the color of a life to add or screen. No, add. Add looks pretty cool. It kind of brightens the colors out a bit more. But yeah, that's the end of this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and comment. Let's see if you can get 15 likes, maybe 20. Um, if you haven't seen it already, be sure to go check out my weekly editing contest, which I uploaded yesterday. And I shall see you guys in the next tutorial.